Interesting TCM and acupuncture. Research on the theory of yin and yang and the philosophical foundation of the five element theory. Introductory statements. The origins and historical development of traditional Chinese medicine, henceforth referred to as TCM and Western medicine are different. Western medicine originated from anatomy and dissection, while TCM is biased toward the big picture. Taking the road of holistic observation and research, borrowing from the most advanced philosophical thoughts available at the time of its inception, combining astronomy and geography to develop a unique topography of the body and forming its own specialized theory, the philosophical foundation of TCM, the theory of yin and yang and the five elements. The theory of yin and yang is a 2000 year old school of thought that is connected with contemporary computers due to its binary construction. It is used in TCM for the purpose of whole body imaging without the use of invasive techniques or external implements. The application of yin yang theory in traditional Chinese medicine theory and clinical practice is first to explain the tissue structure of the human body, second to summarize the physiological functions of the human body, third to explain the pathological changes of the human body, fourth to diagnose and treat illness, and fifth used for disease prevention and treatment. More than 2,000 years ago, the five element theory of Chinese medicine stipulated a theorem similar to that of Mendeleev's 19th century law of the elements. Instead of containing hundreds of discrete chemical elements, it contained five major categories of earthly elemental phenomena. Instead of being discrete physical constructs, these five elements of water, wood, fire, earth, and metal, instead described aspects of physiology, anatomy, and pathology as they accorded to the specific energetic nature of each element. These five elements from Chinese philosophy were used in a clinical setting, not only as a guide to understand pathological change in the human body, but also as a means to obtain cures for the diseases people experienced in the ancient Chinese world. Contents, part one, the application of yin and yang theory in TCM theory and clinic. Part two, application of the five elements theory in TCM theory and clinic. the application of yin and yang theory in TCM theory and clinic. Yin and yang, a 2000 year old concept connected by theory with computer science. The holistic view and dialectical treatment model are the main characteristics of Chinese medicine. The basic theory of Chinese medicine includes three parts. The philosophical basis of Chinese medicine, including yin, yang, and the five elements. The understanding of human physiology in Chinese medicine. And the understanding of diseases and their complications in Chinese medicine. The practice of whole body imaging is predicated on a holistic way of thinking. 2000 years ago, there were no advanced instruments, but there was an advanced way of thinking. That is, the philosophical method of Chinese medicine. This is why Chinese medicine combines the humanities and natural sciences. For example, 
the yin and yang of Chinese medicine is actually a philosophical point of view. The yin and yang of Chinese medicine is used to explain the division of things into two, like a computer. No matter how advanced, its principles are inseparable from the yin and yang binary numbers of zero and one. The theory of yin and yang is a simple dialectical thought based on the cornerstone of materialism. It is a cosmology and methodology developed by the ancients to understand the origin of the universe and explain changes in the universe. The theory of yin and yang uses the viewpoint of one is divided into two to illustrate the existence of mutual opposition, restriction, repulsion, mutual rooting, mutual use, mutual possession, relationship, growth, decline, transformation, self-harmonization, and a myriad of other natural laws which define the boundary characteristics and forms of the material world. TCM uses the theory of yin and yang to explain the human body. It is believed that the human body is an organism composed of various organizational structures and physiological functions that are both contradictory and coordinated in nature. The theory of yin and yang runs through all aspects of the theoretical system of TCM and is widely used to explain the tissue structure, physiological functions, and pathological changes of the human body, and to guide healthcare and the diagnosis and treatment of diseases. Explaining the tissue structure of the human body. The human body is an organic whole. All the organs and meridians of the human body are not only organically connected, but can also be divided into relatively independent yin and yang parts according to their location and functional characteristics. Therefore, the theory presented in the simple questions protecting life and completing the form chapter of the internal classic says, life is tangible only because of yin and yang. The viscera are divided into yin and yang. The upper part is yang and the lower part is yin. The body surface is yang and the body is yin. Divided by viscera, the five internal organs, heart, liver, spleen, lung, and kidney, belong to the inside, reserving essence and chi. Because they do not leak, they belong to yin. The six fu organs, stomach, gallbladder, triple burner, bladder, large intestine, and small intestine, are superficial, but not containing substance within. So they belong to yang. The meridian system is divided into yin and yang. There are three yin and three yang meridians of the hands and feet in the 12 upright meridians. In short, the upper, lower, inner, outer, front and back parts of the body's viscera, meridians, and all body tissues all contain the unity of yin and yang. Outline of the physiological functions of the human body. Regarding the physiological activities of the human body, both the whole life activity and its parts can be summed up within the framework of yin and yang. The qi of the human body is divided into yin qi and yang qi, according to different functions. Yin qi controls cooling, tranquility, inhibition, injection, and yang qi controls warmth, push, excitement, and rise. It is precisely because of the interplay and interaction between yin and yang qi in the human body that it promotes the mutual transformation between matter and matter and matter and energy in the body and promotes and transforms the life process of the human body. For example, yin and yang are two types of qi in the human body, and clear yang will rise and go out of the upper orifices. 
turbid yin will descend and go out of the lower orifices. And the clear yang will come out of the interstices of the limbs and the limbs themselves. The theory of yin and yang is also used to define the basic mechanisms of life in the human body. The body is driven and maintained by the movement of rising and exiting yin and yang qi to promote and maintain the life activities of the human body. In diagnosis and treatment, we often find that the relative temperature of the hands and feet change due to the manifestations of pathogens. In young people, it's generally the case that the hands and feet are warmer due to their abundance of yang energy. While many older people experience cold extremities because of the gradual decline of yang in their bodies as they age. Explaining the pathological changes of the human body. The occurrence of disease marks the destruction of the balance of yin and yang. So the imbalance of yin and yang is one of the basic pathogenic factors of the disease. The theory of yin and yang is used to explain the pathological changes of the human body, mainly in two aspects. First, analyze the yin and yang attributes of the cause of disease. Generally speaking, the six evils, wind, cold, dampness, dryness, and fire, belong to yang evil, while damage done to the body as a result of diet, lifestyle, and emotional disorders are yin evil. Yin and yang are as broad concepts contain smaller divisions of yin and yang within their framework. For instance, within the six evils, the evils of wind, summer heat, heat, and fire are yang, while the evils of cold and dampness are yin. Second, analyze the basic laws of pathological changes. The process of disease occurrence is the process of fighting between evil and righteousness. Yang evil invades the body, and the righteous yin chi of the body fights against it. Yin evil invades the body, and the righteous yang chi fights against it. In this way, the evil and righteous are struggling, which leads to the imbalance of yin and yang in disease. Within yin and yang imbalance, the main manifestation is the partial prosperity and partial, partial decline, or mutual loss of yin and yang eating disorders, emotional disorders, joy, anger, worry, fear, and panic easily cause illness and belong to pathogenic characteristics. For example, a young Chinese exchange student visiting Canada came to the clinic and complained of emotional illness. We found it to be caused by a high degree of pressure and the unfulfilled desire to have someone in whom to confide, leading ultimately to loneliness and isolation, which eventually presented itself in the form of emotional distress. Seen through the lens of yin and yang, it could be said that the interaction of pathogenic factors related to cold, heat, wind, and so on may have all played a contributing part in the pathogenesis of this student's illness. Explaining the pathological changes of the human body. Relative, flourish, relative flourishing and decline of yin and yang as the cause of disease. This concept is mainly used to generalize the cold and hot pathological changes that occur due to the imbalance between the oppositional constraints imposed by yin and yang. Yang flourishing generates heat, 
yin flourishing generates cold. When yang is in excess, it causes yin disease. When yin is in excess, it causes yang disease. Yang deficiency leads to cold. Yin deficiency leads to heat, is the pathological general outline of cold and heat diseases. For example, some women have irregular menstruation and high blood volume, indicating that they're weak due to qi deficiency. And as a result, yin flourishing causes a yang presentation. Yin and yang mutual damage. This concept is mainly used to explain pathogenic factors caused by the loss of function within the mutual exchange and relationship between essence and blood and blood and qi. If we use the mutual consumption and promotion of yin and yang to understand this problem, we can see in one instance that the loss of the oppositional and antagonistic functions of yin and yang present as the decline of one aspect and the flourishing of another. Well, in a second example, when yin and yang lose their ability to mutually root and assist one another, this typically results in a pathogenic loss of both energies. An example, after 55 years old, men are prone to yang deficiency. In this case, it's appropriate to introduce the prescription promoted by Confucius. Soak ginger in vinegar, slice the ginger, soak it in Zhengjiang vinegar for seven to 10 days, eat three to five tablets every morning. Ginger is relatively warm. Use vinegar to remove the spiciness. Vinegar can also soften blood vessels. Around the age of 50, women have symptoms of menopause, yin deficiency and hot flashes. After sufficient time, they will become weak. This is the manifestation of the relationship between yin and yang, mutual roots, mutual use, and growth and decline of yin and yang. Diagnosis and treatment. The theory of yin and yang is used to diagnose disease mainly through the analysis of data collected by the four clinical observations and expanding on the yin and yang attributes of various syndromes. First, analyze the data of the four clinical observations. Visual inspection, the color of a patient's continence, is divided into yin and yang. Observe the light and shade of the color to distinguish the attributes of the condition. Those with bright colors belong to yin and those with dullness belong to yang. Vice versa, those with bright colors belong to yang and those with dullness belong to yin. Listening combined with inspection. If the patient presents with a voice which is high and loud and speaks more, appearing to be agitated, it's likely that they are experiencing heat symptoms associated with yang. If the voice is shallow and weak and the patient is less prone to speaking, quietly cupping their hands together, it may be inferred that the patient is weak cold and yin. According to pulse presentation, when inspecting the location of a pulse, the presentation of its movement, its shape, and the rapidity of its movement, we can analyze the relative degree of yin and yang contained therein. The frontmost position of cun is yang, while the back position of chu is yin. In consideration of their movement characteristics, if it pushes all the way to the surface, it's yang. If it's hard to find and seems to be disappearing, it's yin. In regard to the number of beats per minute, a fast pulse is yang, while a slow pulse is yin. In the presentation of the shape of the pulse, a large floating and overflowing pulse is yang, while a deep, astringent, and thin pulse is yin. Second, Outline disease symptoms. In clinical syndrome differentiation, the theory of yin and yang uses yin and yang to summarize and analyze various complicated syndromes. Syndrome differentiation and treatment is one of the basic characteristics of TCM, and the determination of syndromes is a core conceptual aspect of diagnosis of diseases. The eight principles analytic, analytic method of TCM tells us that which is associated with the surface level of the body, heat syndromes and excess is yang, while that which is internal, cold and deficient belongs to yin. 
the analytic method of the organs and viscera believes Yin and yang imbalances in the organs and viscera qi can present with many complex sim symptoms and cannot be characterized into absolute representations of yin and yang due to the complexity of materials involved. To give an example, in the classification of deficiency syndromes, uh, the heart may be divided into heart essence, blood deficiency, heart qi deficiency, heart yin deficiency, and heart yang deficiency. Thus, although clearly each syndrome is associated with deficiency, it cannot be universally stated that each of, each of these conditions is a representation of yin, even if deficiency is generally considered in the eight principles to be yin in nature. Blood essence is essentially tranquil and yin in nature. Well, active qi belongs to yang. Therefore, the deficiency of essence and blood belongs to the yin category, while the deficiency of qi belongs to yang. Use for disease prevention and treatment. Adjusting yin and yang to maintain or restore the relative balance of the body and achieve the soothing of yin and containment of yang is the basic principle of treatment and the principal theory of disease prevention of yin and yang in TCM. First of all, the adjustment of yin and yang can guide health outcomes. The purpose of health preservation is to prolong life and prevent disease. The most fundamental principle is to regulate yin and yang by according to the principle of their natural changes in order to regulate the yin and yang of the human body so that the yin and yang of the patient and the change of yin and yang according to the four cardinal times of morning, afternoon, evening, and night, or spring, summer, fall, and winter, operate as one. For example, the principle of nourishing yang in the spring and summer and yin in the autumn and winter states that in summer, if we boil more soup to prevent sweating, the yang of the heat generated in our food will hurt the yang within the body. Thus, it's incumbent upon us to sufficiently research and ponder how we may best be in accord with the ongoing machinations of time in order to capture the essence of its transformation and use it to the advantage of our health. Second, determine the principles of treatment. The treatment principle of the unbalanced flourishing of yin and yang is as follows. Yin and yang entering a relative state of unbalanced excess is what constitutes our proof of the illness condition. The constant rule in such cases is when there's an excess, drain it. This will reduce potential damage caused by excess. In the case that either yin or yang enters a state of decline, it's commonly held that the treatment principle is when there's deficiency, it must be treated through tonification in order to tonify what is not sufficient. Third, analyze and summarize the performance of a drug. The theory of yin and yang is used in disease treatment not only to determine the principle of treatment, but also to summarize the properties of drugs as a basis for guiding clinical medication. Use for disease prevention and treatment. Medicinal properties of cold, hot, warm, and cool are the principal climactic aspects of herbal medicine. Among them, cold is yin and warm is yang. Cold and cool medicines can clear away heat and relieve fire, reducing and eliminating the body's heat, and are often used for yang or heat syndromes. Hot or warm medicines can dispel cold and warm the inside, alleviate and terminate conditions of cold in the body. Medicines performing this function include ginseng, herbal plasters for external applications, and so on. The five flavors of sour, bitter, sweet, pungent, and salty comprise the five flavors. The pungent taste causes dissipation. The sweet taste can nourish and help acute conditions. Light taste has the effect of dampening. The sour taste can draw energy inward, making it converge. The bitter taste can strengthen. It can also cause energy to descend and can instill firmness. 
and the salty taste can soften firmness and drain downward. Therefore, the three flavors of pungent, sweet, and light are yang, and the three flavors of sour, bitter, and salty are yin. The flavors are found in various herbs, such as licorice, coptis, and so on. Upward and downward movement. Upward and downward movement refers to the tendency of drugs to perform either a rising or descending action in the body. If the energetic quality of a herb is rising and floating in nature, this also means that it's likely to float outward and toward the surface thus meaning that its nature is largely one of diffusion and yang. If the medicine has a tendency to descend, sink inward and move downward, this medicine can be said to have the characteristics of astringing and draining and has a tendency to press down, making it yin in nature. Medicines such as ochre have this quality of descent. Part two, application of the five element theory in TCM theory and clinic. The five element theory is not only an ancient cosmology and methodology, but also an early and simple iteration of systems theory. The five elements theory believes that all things in the universe can be distributed at different levels into five categories of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. These five categories of things and phenomena at different levels constitute a world of constant movement and change. Traditional Chinese medicine uses the theory of the five elements to explain the human body, constructing five physiological and pathological systems centered on the five internal organs, and expounds the relationship between them and the close connection with the natural environment. Mandelev's periodic law of elements refers to the fact that all matter in the world is composed of certain elements. Two or 3,000 years ago, Chinese medicine introduced philosophical thinking and used the five elements to explain that the world's substances are composed of certain elements. It was used to explain the physiology, pathology, and anatomy of the human body and used the five elements to guide treatment. The advanced instrument of Chinese medicine is in its philosophical thought. The philosophical thought is abstract. It establishes abstracted representations of the laws of things in the world in order to make comprehensible characterizations to help describe our innately complex reality, and then applies these characterizations to the treatment principles of Chinese medicine. For example, the spring is represented by the element of wood. In spring, plants sprout with such vigor that they may even move stones. Wood in Chinese medicine is upright and cannot be suppressed, otherwise it will cause illness. Depression of energy will lead to stagnation of liver and qi, and severe inflammation will lead to inflammation of the liver. However, the liver in Western medicine is an anatomical concept, and liver function tests are required before the tests come out. I dare not diagnose what liver disease is, but for Chinese medicine, stringy pulse, red on the tip of the tongue, bitter mouth, dry throat, and irritability are all signs of liver depression. So, xiao yao pills, chai hu shu gan powder, and the like are needed. To Chinese medicine, this is a disease, but Western medicine believes the liver function is normal and this person is not sick. At present, Western medicine has also introduced some concepts such as sub health. Most people are actually sub healthy. However, Chinese medicine is particularly suitable and good at treating sub health, and Chinese medicine does not open the human body in such invasive ways as surgery but treats diseases of the inner body from the outside. The Procedure of Chinese medicine to see patients is to look at people first and use Chinese medicine thinking first. Well, the diagnosis of Western medicine is used as a reference. Traditional Chinese medicine pays attention to the balancing of yin and yang, improving symptoms and gradually curing diseases. The pathogenic factors of Chinese and Western medicine are also different such as in the case of acute bacillary dysentery. In the case of a control group, it's confirmed that acupuncture is better than berberine. Acupuncture is like a key which can open the body and activate the natural healing properties of the body. The Five Elements Theory is a philosophical school of thought that studies the concepts, characteristics, and the laws of the five elements of wood, fire, earth, 
metal, and water, and categorizes them according to the principles of restraint and multiplication, explaining the occurrence, development, change, and interrelationship of everything in the universe. This theory belongs to the ancient Chinese interrogative metaphysics. According to the five elements theory of authentication, everything in the universe is composed of five basic substances, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. The development and changes of various things and phenomena in nature are all constantly changing and interrelated. As such, the five elements represent the constant cycle of cause and effect, which ties all events of time and space together in a continuum. The basic concept of the five elements. The five elements, namely wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, are five directions along which movement may change. The five in the five elements refers to the five substances of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water that are differentiated from the original chi of the universe. From a, methodological, from a methodological point of view, the five elements have gone beyond the concept of materiality and evolved into five basic attributes that summarize everything in the universe and explain the complex relationships of all things. Features of the five elements. The characteristics of the five elements are abstract and gradually formed theoretical concepts based on the ancients' intuitive observation and simple understanding of the five substances of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, and were derived from many generations of observation of the natural tendencies of living things to change throughout the full length of their lives. This essential basis of the five elements is used in the def definition of the attributes of material things. Wood means upright and straight. This refers to the characteristics of growth, softness, flexion, and extension of the branches of trees. It's extended to mean that all things in phenomena with growth, emergent movement, stabilization, and relaxation are attributed to wood. Fire means the rising of heat. This refers to the fact that fire has the characteristics of heat, rising and light, which is extended to include the characteristics of warmth, upward movement and brightness, and can be further expanded to incorporate all phenomena with warm and rising and bright properties and effects within the category of fire. Earth refers to the planting and harvesting of grains. Earth generally refers to the agricultural activities of humans planting and harvesting grains. By extension, all things and phenomena that have biochemical bearing and accepting properties or functions are returned to the earth. Features of the five elements. Metal refers to the ability to conform and change. This means that metal is comprised of a combination of hardness and softness. Although the texture of gold is hard, it can be used as a weapon to kill, but it has softness that can be changed according to people's wishes. The concept may be extended to all things and phenomena that have the properties or functions of sinking, killing, and convergence. Water means running downward. Run means smooth and moisturized. Down means directionally downward and downward in movement. The characteristics of moisturizing and descending are extended to mean that all things and phenomena that have the properties and functions of moisturizing, descending, and cold, and hiding are attributed to water. From the characteristics of the five elements mentioned above, we can see that wood, fire, earth, metal, and water in the theory of the five elements are no longer five specific substances themselves, but the general representation of different properties, five forms of energetic movement in nature. Five categories of things and phenomena. There are mainly two methods for the classification of things and phenomena according to the five elements the analogy method and the deduction method, image-based analogy method. This method uses representative thinking about images of phenomena to build the conceptual framework required to form a sign regime capable of explaining the nature of a function of a thing in the material world. That is to say, the image of the sun rising in the east is an image that can give us an indication of what the energetic character of the wood element is like while well, the sun setting in the west serves as a primary example of metal. Comparison and deduction method. The five elements may also be established through the process of deduction and induction. 
That is to say, because we know that the liver is represented by the wood element and that the liver combines with the gallbladder and tendons, we can further deduce that the termini of the liver is in the nails of the fingers and the toes, and in the eyes, since the functions of grasping and opening belong to the tendons and may thus be traced back to the liver and gallbladder, meaning that the entire system upon which this activity is predicated is governed by the wood element. The basic content of five elements theory includes the four aspects of the five elements, mutual generation and mutual restraint, regulation and flourishing, mounting and insult, and the five element mother and child relationship. The five elements are connected through generation. The order of mutual growth is wood produces fire, fire produces earth, earth produces metal, metal produces water, water produces wood. The mother-child relationship refers to the creating element as the mother and the created as the child. The five elements restrain each other. The order of the five elements cycle of restraint is wood restrains earth, earth restrains water, water restrains fire, fire restrains metal, and metal restrains wood. Victory occurs in the case that one of the elements successfully overcomes the other. For instance, wood controlling earth is an example of wood being victorious. But in the case that earth is controlled by wood, earth is defeated. The principle applies all throughout the control cycle of the five elements. The systematization of the five elements means that the five elements are both mutually supportive and interrelated, maintaining balance and coordination and promoting stable and orderly change and development among objects. There are two inseparable aspects of mutual generation and constraint of the five elements. Without birth, there's no creation of material aspects of reality, and thus there will be no opportunity for further development and growth of living things. Without restraint, there will be no way to create a boundary around the development of a thing in order to allow it to have the normal ability to regulate itself. Therefore, there must be restraint in birth and birth in restraint. This will allow order to be maintained and establish a balance and coordination between objects, prom promoting stable and orderly change in development. The rule of the five element system is, when one of the five elements is hyperactive, it must be targeted to prevent it from causing harm. That is, there is restraint in mutual growth and development and restraint. Wood also restrains earth while fire generates earth. Earth produces metal and fire surpasses metal. Metal generates water and earth suppresses water. Water gives rise to wood and metal suppresses wood. Wood gives birth to fire and water suppresses fire. The cycle continues endlessly in this fashion. The victory of the five elements means that one of the five elements is prosperous, which causes a balancing counter-reaction so that the five elements re return to coordination and stability. The victory of the five elements is the self-regulatory aspect of the five elements according to the law of mutual restraint. Victory appears in two situations. One is that one of the elements is in excess, that is, absolutely overpowering the other, and that one of the five elements is insufficient, so it's easily overwhelmed. Returning chi is produced due to the appearance of victorious chi. Victorious chi first and then returning chi is produced due to the appearance of victorious chi. In order to retaliate against the victorious chi and restore a state of equilibrium. Returning chi refers to the elemental force which rebalances the elements after the element which controls is victorious. As such, in the case that wood is victorious, then the returning chi of metal will control it and return order to the cycle of the elements. In the case that water is victorious, then earth will return to control water in order to restore order and so on. The key to understanding this principle is in knowing the control cycle of the five elements. In clinic, we may encounter a case where as a result of the victory of liver fire, the patient finds they easily become upset. After sufficient time without treatment, they'll experience a stagnation of liver chi, and as a result, fire will attack the lung, resulting in a cough. In this case, we cannot simply treat the lung. We must also dredge the liver meridian to help them deal with the original cause of their illness. If they're inundated by pressure at work, and this is what's causing the aggravation of the liver, and ultimately weakening the lung, resulting in a cough, our central concern is to soothe the liver in order to relieve the stress of work and allow the body to regain the strength it needs to be able to naturally ward off the cough. 
The victory and return relationship is also known as the vengeance of mother and son. If one element is in excess, it will be victorious over the other element that it naturally controls. So the returning element must add balance to this dynamic by controlling it. Effectively, it is the child of the element which was controlled, which enacts vengeance upon the victorious element. Thus, if water were to be controlled by earth, earth would then be victorious. But because wood is the child of water and is able to break and control earth, it acts as the filial offspring over water and takes revenge on earth by controlling it. In other words, the child of the controlled element returns to attack and control the element, which was originally victorious over its mother, ultimately returning balance to the cycle of the elements. Mounting of the five elements. The mounting of the five elements refers to a time in which a victorious element acts excessively upon the element that it controls. For instance, wood may mount or overact on earth. Earth may overact on water. Water may overact on fire. Fire may overact on metal, and metal may overact on wood. In such cases of overreaction, there are two possible manifestations. There is excessive action leading to mountain, mounting. In this case, one of the five elements is too strong and easily controls its neighbor, making it too weak to function normally and causing the normal cycle of the elements to lose its natural rhythm. In cases such as when wood controls earth, well, it is true that in normal circumstances when wood controls earth, it would be the case that wood was victorious over earth. If the chi of wood is too powerful and excessively controls earth, then ultimately earth will be diminished such that it can no longer carry out its normal function. In such cases where wood is excessively powerful, it's normally said that wood mounts earth. In the second example, it may be the case that because of the weakness of an element, it may be mounted by another element. In this case, there must be some sort of inherent weakness in the body that causes the overreaction of one element upon another. As an example, under normal circumstances, wood controls earth, but if earth chi is insufficient and wood is still operating at its optimal level, earth will be unable to offer any resistance against wood's control mechanism and thus be further weakened by its attack. This will ultimately result in a situation in which earth goes even farther into deficit, causing the five elements again to fall out of order. In the human body, the mutual control cycle is a sign of good health, but the mutual mounting or overacting cycle, it's a sign of illness. The five elements insult cycle refers to the time when an element which would typically be controlled is able to reverse the control process and attack the element which controls it. In such cases, we can see wood attacking metal, fire attacking water, water attacking earth, and earth attacking wood. There are two reasons that insult may occur. One is excessive activity and another is insufficiency. A condition of excess resulting in insult occurs when one of the five elements is excessively strong and it's not possible for another element to control it. In this case, when the controlling element fails in performing its task, it will be insulted by the element which would normally be brought under its control. For example, if wood were to be excessively strong and metal were not able to control it, wood, return, wood would return to attack metal resulting in insult. Insult caused by deficient conditions occurs when one element is too weak to overcome the element it usually controls. As such, the controlled element is able to reverse and attack the weak controlling element. This might happen in the case that metal is weak and unable to control wood. Because of the weakness of metal, wood is able to turn around its fortunes and control metal instead. The key difference between overacting and insulting in the case of overactivity, the direction of the control cycle is still intact, but due to overactivity of one element on another, disharmony is brought to the five element cycle. But in the case of insult, there's a reversal of the control cycle, which causes damage. In a situation where wood is excessively strong, it may overact on earth, but it may also insult metal depending on which aspect of the control cycle is occurring, which elements are strong and which elements are in deficit. This relationship of over-controlling and insulting is quite profound and important to the study of Chinese medicine. The five elements interaction of mother and child. The negative interaction of mother and child occurs when either the mother is ill and it affects the child or the child is ill and it affects the mother. Both of these conditions occurring in the five elements is abnormal. Mother and child. Maternal disease affecting the child refers to abnormalities of the five elements involving their children. 
resulting in abnormalities in both mother and child. The general rule is the weakness of the mother causes deficit in the child, and eventually both mother and child are insufficient. For example, in the instance that wood and water are having such an interaction, it will be the result of weakness of water that wood is not fully nourished and goes into decline. Or in more specific terms, because the kidneys are not robust enough to support the liver, the liver chi is also insufficient to perform its duties. Child and mother. The disease of child and mother refers to a situation in which a problem with one of the five elements causes its mother element to also develop a problem. There are three cases in which this is possible. First, because the child is flourishing, the mother also flourishes and creates an excess in both mother and child. The second case, the, the child is insufficient, the mother also becomes insufficient, then eventually both go into deficit. The third case is that the child is flourishing and in excess, but it is not properly controlled, which ultimately results in the mother going into deficit. Conclusion. TCM and Western medicine have different origins, with Western medicine taking its origin in the study of anatomy and dissection. TCM is biased toward the total activity of the body and takes the road of holistic observation and research, borrowing from Chinese philosophy, the sciences, and humanities in the development of a theory able to include the wisdom not only of medicine, but also of philosophy, astronomy, and geography. It serves as a robust medical system fully capable of producing results in the modern medical arena. Thanks for watching.